Okay, the next sample that we're going to be doing is, is called diagonal basting. And um, what I first did was I have these two pieces of um, three and a half by six, and I need to fold back an inch of one of these samples. So I took my ruler and I measured an inch, and then I went over to the iron and I pressed, um, I pressed this back. And then I'm going to line up, I'm gonna line up my fabric and just kind of layer them on top of each other um, so that, that the folded edge lines up with um, my second piece of fabric. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put some pins in here to hold it in place in case I need to pick up my sample and take it a little bit closer. I'm gonna double check, make sure that it's lined up on the bottom side here. And go ahead and put a pin in there and then I'm gonna put one right in the middle just to hold everything in place. And I'll, I'll probably have to remove these as I, as I start sewing. So again, um, I have my hand sewing needle threaded um, so that it's one inch thick. And I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot at the end. All right. If I can grab a hold of that thread there. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work, um, before we work from, I worked from right to left, and but this time we're actually going to be working from top to bottom, and we're going to be inserting our needle and keeping it horizontal, but we'll actually be creating some diagonal basting lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom, and we're going to insert our needle so that it's it catches that knot just right at the very end, and we're inserting that about an eighth of an inch away uh, from this folded edge. All right. Then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab it again to make sure that that knot stays there. So I'm just gonna do a quick little knot at the end, so I can go ahead and get going here. Then I'm just gonna start right above that, about an eighth of an inch in, and I'm gonna push my needle all the way through, and I'm gonna try to pick it up about um, about three quarter inches in width over. So just to give you an idea of three quarter inches, um, we folded it back an inch and so it's going to catch just before the end of it. If I can grab it here, three quarter inches. All right, now I'm just going to pull my thread through. Okay, then I'm going to move up about an inch and an inch is a fairly decent decent chunk. So again, if it's not if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. If you're a little bit closer, a little bit more farther away, and then I'm going to insert it from right to left. And again, if you're left-handed, you might be doing this a little bit opposite. And I'm going to pull that thread through. Again, I want this distance, the distance from top to bottom, to be about an inch, and the distance from right to left to be about three quarters of an inch, so that I'm always catching my my fabric that was folded back on the back side. All right, and when I insert that needle, I'm inserting it about an eighth of an inch in, and I'm just moving it horizontally about three quarter inches, and I wanna make sure I don't catch that thread and accidentally tie a knot. All right, I just pull that through, and what I'm creating is I'm creating those diagonal basting lines. All right, I'm gonna move up one inch, insert my needle, Grab about three quarter of an inch over, pull that needle through, and just keep repeating this step until you get all the way to the top. Okay. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now when you do this on a flat surface, you can actually kind of use, you can press down into the table and grab it underneath and then pop it back up if you want to also. It depends on kind of what, what you think will work best for you. Some people prefer to hold it in their hands. Some people prefer to press against the table. So I'm just gonna show you both, both methods. And I can actually feel it with my pin kind of scrape along the bottom a little bit. So I know that it went all the way through I'm not worried about that. And as you can see, like my um, my thread's getting a lot shorter. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I don't accidentally pull that thread out, um, but I gently just extend 
the distance that I have to work with here for that for that long thread tail and then I'm going to have to thread my needle with a little bit longer one for my next hand stitch. Alright, almost done. And then as I as I finish up here, I'm going to do one more across and then close it on the back side. Let me move that pin out of the way so it doesn't poke me. Alright. Alright, and then I'm going to flip that over and I'm just going to tie tie that off. I'm just going to do a quick little back and forth. Got some raveling yarns here. Whoop. And I pulled that, I pulled my thread out of my needle, but that's not the end of the world. I'm just going to do a little knot with my fingers here and close that off with a knot and then trim my tails. And to go in, so again, this was the diagonal basting. Um, it consists of horizontal stitch it, stitches, right, because we moved our needle horizontally taken parallel to each other. So we moved up about an inch, took another horizontal line, moved up about an inch, took another horizontal line, and what this produced was a diagonal floats. We have diagonal threads, long floats, um, between the horizontal, um, the horizontal stitching. Um, we use diagonal basting to hold or control fabric layers in an area during construction and pressing. So a lot of times you might see this type of um, diagonal basting on nicely tailored garments, um, like especially tailored tailored men's suit jackets. And we're you know we're holding together three layers of fabric. We have our top layer, and then the the layer that was folded back, and then our bottom layer here. All right, um, and these are these are long diagonal stitches. Um, you can actually take shorter ones. And those are used to hold the seam edges flat during stitching or pressing. So just know that like this was a long method, but you can actually do shorter ones where they're not as long in width and they're not taken as, as far apart up and down. But again, it's just to stabilize and control multiple fabric layers in a specific area during construction as well as pressing. So these are those diagonal bastings.